Land Christian Mission Church. Here are our COVID-19 protocols. As we do our best to overcome the pandemic situation, we kindly request that you ensure that all requested hygiene protocols are adhered to in the best interest of everyone. Face masks shall be worn throughout the service by all persons present in the church, except a person who is officiating preaching, singing, reading, praying, or playing a wind instrument. A physical distance of one meter shall be maintained between all persons. Only members of the same household may sit together. Your hands shall be sanitized upon entry. Your temperature shall be taken before entering the church. A person who is coughing repeatedly sneezing or exhibit any flu-like symptoms or who have having their temperature taken for a second time still registers a temperature that exceeds 37.5 degrees shall not be allowed to enter the church. No hymnals or Bibles shall be distributed. Your offerings shall be placed in the baskets on the table at the altar either before the commencement of the service or should you arrive after the service commences at the indication of the worship leader. Thank you for your cooperation. Good morning to the church and all listening online. It's such a privilege to be here this morning, whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you're listening to us online as well. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand as we wait on Sister Maria Farley to come and open this morning's prayer. Good morning to the church. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, Lord God, we do count it a wonderful privilege that we can be found in your house this morning, Lord. We thank you for bringing each and every one of us here safely, Lord. And we also thank you for the technology, Lord, which allows those who cannot be in the sanctuary this morning to still participate in the worship this morning. And for that, Lord, we give you honor and praise. Even now, Lord God, I just bring the worship team before you. I pray that you will just touch their voices another time, Lord God. I pray that your anointing will be upon them and upon each song that as they sing, Lord God, that it will be a sweet smelling savor towards you, Lord. Even now, touch the hands of the musicians in a special way, Lord God, that they may play skillfully before you, Lord. And also remember our technical team, Lord, as they have to do their various roles, Lord God, I pray you continue to bless and strengthen them, Lord. So we just give you honor, Lord God. We just give you glory, Lord. And we pray that everything that will be said and done, Lord God, even remembering your ministering servant at this time, Lord, we thank you for that maid servant who will voice forth your preached word. And I pray that as that time comes, Lord God, that she'll bring forth your word with power, Lord. So I pray that everything that will be said and done in your sanctuary this morning will be done to the honor and glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Maria. Let's open our Bibles and turn to St. John chapter 4, verses 19 to 26. St. John chapter 4, verses 19 to 26. Reading. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say, that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Let's read over verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Amen. So as we worship today, I pray, O oh God, that we will all worship in spirit and in truth, whether we are listening or whether we are in the sanctuary present. I pray that we will worship our Father in heaven in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. So as we invite the Holy Spirit into this place this morning, we're going to start off this morning's worship with the song, Here is My Worship.
to be praised. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Receive it, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Here's my worship, all of my worship, Father, because your promise still stands, God. Great is your faithfulness, God. You've never failed me yet, amen? Amen. Walking around these walls, I know by now they fall, but you have never failed me yet. Wait.
Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you haven't placed your offering in the offering baskets, you can do so now. After which, we'll invite the assistant pastor to come forward. As we sing, our God is greater. give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. His mercies endureth forever. Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We glorify your name now, Lord, for you are worthy to be praised, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you have given unto us, Lord, a day to rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, we bring this offering before you. I ask the Lord that you will bless it. I bless those that give this morning. Remember those that did not have to give, but will, will take this opportunity to give on to you. I ask the Lord that you will increase it, Lord, with good measure, pressed down, shaken, and runneth over. Bless the spending of this money in no other name but the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. We thank God on this first Sunday in the beautiful month of September that we can be gathered in the house of the Lord. God is good. God is faithful. And for those of you joining us online, we welcome you and we pray that so far you have enjoyed being in the presence of the Lord. 
Let us begin with our Christian mission. Let us begin with our Christian mission headquarters announcements for week commencing Sunday, the 5th of September, 2021. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Eliana continues to improve daily. Although there are certain restrictions imposed on her at this time, she maintains a cheerful attitude and a determined spirit. We continue to wish her a speedy recovery. All church services, including weddings and funerals, are now limited to 25 persons with a mandatory six-foot spacing between households. The length of all church of all services is now limited to 90 minutes. Continue to be extremely vigilant in your observation of the government's COVID-19 protocols. Read protocols at the commencement of the services, wear masks, sanitize hands, social distance, and keep all registers up to date. In compliance with the government's requests for data, research buildings assessment, please contact, complete the form and forward the same to headquarters immediately. Today's worship experience will be live streamed at 11 a.m. from Strowland Christian Mission Church. Join in our Southern Circuit and Christian Mission International Facebook pages. During the past weeks, Sister Marian Austin and Sister Ursel Walker of our Jones Village and Gospel Tabernacle Assemblies respectively answered their home calls. We extend sincere condolences to the families of our beloved sisters and the members of our Jones Village and Gospel Tabernacle Assemblies. The homegoing service for the life of our beloved brother Ishmael Brayton of the Branch Bay Christian Mission will take place on Monday, September the 13th. Continue fervently in prayer for the conclusion of our Hillaby Christian Mission Church building project. Our Heavenly Father is faithful, and indeed he is working his purposes out. You are invited to see the attached flyer and donate to the Furnish the Sanctuary campaign. You are encouraged to continue fervent in prayer and fasting for the various ministries of the Church International, the sick and shuttings, and families of our dear departed. Reverend Joel D. Hope, General Superintendent. Praise the Lord. This morning we extend a special welcome to everyone who is worshiping with us today and those who are viewing us online. Our pastor is not with us this morning because she is doing a different engagement this morning, but she sends her love and best wishes to the church. Continue to remember Brother Curtis and family in our prayers. The funeral service for his dad, Mr. Albert Blendman, will be held on Monday at St. George Parish Church. Early morning prayer service will be held next, Sunday, next Saturday, the 11th of September at 6 a.m. The youth ministry will be responsible for the service. Bible study will continue on Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. We will also have roll call. Caroline Worrell arrived safely in the USA, to God be the glory, and she continues to request our prayers. Continue to pray for our Sunday school students, the youth ladies, sign language, mentorship, and dance ministries, the senior members, and those who are ill. And this morning, we have birthday greetings to send out to Sister Eurus Ennis and Regina. 
They will celebrate their birthdays on the 8th and the 9th of September. We wish them a very happy birthday and God's continual blessings. And now we invite the worship team to sing the happy birthday song for them. Happy birthday to you. from our speaker this morning. I'm going to ask you all to stand as we sing Fill My Cup, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. Jesus Christ. Truly God is good and his mercies endure forever. I want to welcome all of you to this, our first Sunday of September. Those of you who are worshiping with us here in the sanctuary and those of you who are viewing with us online, we pray that thus far your hearts has been blessed and your souls has been edified. I want to say thanks to the worship team for so ably enabling us in a session of worship, truly God is good. And each song 
we're talking about the goodness of God and the fact that we should never let go of the goodness of God and the awesome power of God. This morning, I want to welcome each and every one of you. At this time, I just want to say a prayer before I get into the word. This morning, we are going to look at the book of Ruth, and I'm going to go to the second chapter of Ruth as we prepare for the word. Even now, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. Father, we thank you for yet another beautiful day, God. We thank you, Lord God, for another beautiful Sunday, God. Not a cloud in the sky this morning. Father God, we thank you, God, for the sunshine. We thank you, God, even when there's a little bit of rain. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity to be found ourselves in our right minds this morning and to find ourselves in the right place this morning. Truly you are God, and there is none like you. Father God, even as I stand in your presence this morning, I pray that you will search me, God. Pass me through the refining fire even now in the name of Jesus. Father God, as you took Peter and James and John into the upper room, I pray even now, God, that you will take me into the upper room. Father God, you will set me apart this morning. Father God, you would hide me behind the cross. Father God, let nothing be said of me this morning. But just God, even now, I present myself as an oracle unto you. I pray, God, that you will fill me. I pray that you would use me, Lord God. Let me speak the self, the Lord, this morning in the name of Jesus. Father God, have your way. Have your way in and through this service. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're going to look at St. John, chap uh, sorry, Ruth chapter 2 for a few minutes. And we will read it together. Ruth chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. We'll read the entire chapter so we can get the essence of the message today. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, mighty man of wealth of the family of Emelet, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in those sight. I shall find grace. And she said unto her, go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her heat was light on the part of the field belonging unto Boaz, and the kinsman of Imelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then, Bo then said Boaz unto the servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant said, "Was yet the servant that was yet over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitess damsel that came back from the Mo Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she said, came and even the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean for another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go that have I not charged a young men that they should not touch thee? And when thou art thirsty, the vessel and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face and bowed before herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldst take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It has full thou showed me. All that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and mother, and the land of the nativity, and art come unto the people which thou knowest not thereof. For Lord, work. 
and the full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaid, though I may not like handmaid. And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come thou hither, and eat of thy bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was spiced and left. And when she had risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not, and let her fall hands of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. So she gleaned in the field until even, and beat out that he had gleaned, and it was about offer of barley. And she took it up and went into the city. And her mother-in-law said what she had gleaned and, for, and gave her that she had received, reserved after she sufficed. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where rotteth thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought and said, a man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. And Naomi said unto the daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of God, living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near a kind on us, and one of our next of kinsmen. And Ruth and the Moabites said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not on a one. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest and dealt with her mother-in-law. Here endeth the reading of God's word. You may take your seats. This morning, the topic I have for the message is the right relationship. The right relationship. Uh, many of us know as Bible readers, the right relationship starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. And as we went through the passage just now with Ruth and Naomi, we recognize how awesome God is and how God places us in the right place at the right time for the right reasons. So very often growing up as a child, I would hear the older folks say things like, when you start wrong, you will end wrong. But when you start right, you will end right. And this morning, I am led by the Spirit to say to you folks, when we start with the right relationship, we will end right. And that relationship is not a relationship with a man, a woman, a boy, or a girl, but that's a relationship with Jesus Christ. A relationship with Jesus Christ is second to none. Because even when we fall away from God, even when we go our own way, even when we do our own thing, you know what? God still loves us. He said in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I will be with you even unto the end. Even when we forsake God, even when we don't do the will of God, God still loves us and he still wants us to be his own. Even now, as I go through this passage of scripture, and I'm sure many of you would have read the book of Ruth, the entire book of Ruth, there are so many lessons in this book for us today as believers. If one of the first things that caught me was Naomi herself. Because Naomi must have had a relationship with God. She thought when her husband had died in the foregoing chapter, she had lost her husband who passed away. Then she had lost her son. I'm sure there was a period of mourning for Naomi. But she didn't mourn forever. Naomi got up and dust herself off 
And sometimes we as believers, we find ourselves in a period of mourning. And in that period of mourning, it is okay to mourn sometimes. It is okay sometimes to realize that we are not where we ought to be. It is, it is time we realize we are, not all, we are not where we ought to be. But the important thing about this lesson is that you don't stay where you are. Is that you move on. You move on and you move on with God. And it comes only with that right relationship. Naomi got up and decided, I am not going to steer her anymore. There is a barley harvest going on in Jerusalem. I am going home. There is plenty of food where I come from in my country. And she decided she was going back to her family. She was going back to her God. She didn't just say, I'm going to my family. She was going back to her God. Naomi was a woman of God. And she lived a good life, an exemplary life, to the point where it caught Ruth's attention. And when Naomi decided she was going to go home, she said to her daughter-in-laws, you ladies, your husband have died, which are my sons. It is better that you go home and start a life for yourself. And Naomi encouraged them to leave her and go and start a life for herself where she would go back to Jerusalem with her people and with her God. But there was one daughter-in-law who had a dedication like no other. She recognized there was something about Ruth. There was something that Ruth had that she wanted to be a part of. And that daughter-in-law, there's something that Naomi had part of me and she wanted to be a part of it. And that daughter-in-law was Ruth. And she decided, I am going to go with you, Ruth. Your people are going to be my people. And she didn't just stop there. She said, and your God are going to be my God. But note in the passage in the foregoing verses, Naomi was sending them home to their common G gods. But here it is that Ruth is saying, Naomi, I am going to Jerusalem with you, with your people and your God. But note, there's a capital God for Naomi's God. This morning, we want the capital G God. This morning, we want that right relationship with God. And we see as Ruth journeyed with Naomi, she didn't go and sit down. When God has placed us in the right path for the right reasons, we have got to work. We have got to earn our keep. We have got to make ourselves available unto God. And Ruth went, and she didn't just go and decide, I'm going to go and stay in Naomi's house, and I'm going to eat a little of what she has, and I am going to be satisfied. She decided, I am going to work. I am going to go, and I'm going to glean barley, and I will take care not only of myself. She wasn't selfish, but I will take care of my mother-in-law, who is now all alone because her husband is gone and her sons are gone. This morning, we need hearts of roof. We need a heart like roof this morning to be able to, to have that right relationship with God and to not only think of ourselves, but to think of others. Also, as we go on in the passage, you will see, as Ruth went into the field, she was not led by the Spirit to any old field. She was led to a field of a relative of her mother-in-law. She was led to a field of a kinsman. She was not led to any other field. I'm sure back in that day in Jerusalem, there were many fields that would have been reaping harvest. It would be somewhat like our plantations today. There are plantations everywhere, and everybody is pretty much reaping the same crop at the same time. But she was led to a particular field owned by a man called Boaz. As a young woman, when people would say to me, when are you going to get married now? I would have said to them, I'm waiting for my Boaz. As an unsaved woman, I am sure many of us would have said, we are waiting for our Boaz. I said that many times, but I said it without understanding the true meanings of who Boaz is. I said it understanding that Boaz was a man that had many fields, so in today's society, he's a rich man. He's a man that could take care of you. And many of us would have said that to somebody at some time. I am waiting for my Boaz. But today, it is not just about a Boaz. It's not any Boaz. It is the right Boaz. When you have that right relationship with God, God will make every wrong situation right. 
He will line up your life with exactly who he wants to line it up with. He will bring the right people before you. He will bring the right women in your life. He will bring the right men in your life. He will bring the right friends in your life. He will associate you with the right co-workers. You may go into a firm, and when you go into the firm, God doesn't take you to everybody. He, asks us, he wants us to be cordial with each other, but God will take you to that particular person, that one particular person, who will become not only a co-worker but a friend and God took Ruth into that field that belonged to Boaz he placed her in the right field and we see Boaz was not just any old man he was a man of God he was a man of integrity he was a man that followed protocol he was a man that understand the true meanings of being a kingsman he understood what it was like to be a husband to somebody Boaz understood all the qualities that God would want him to possess. He had all those qualities. When he saw Ruth, he didn't just take her at face value. He didn't just look on the outside. Sometimes we look at individuals and we are looking at the mere shell, but the scriptures will tell us that this shell will fade, this body will fade. Sometimes there's a, there's a passage in the scripture that tells us our teeth will be gone. It tells us our eyesight will fade, our hearing will become impaired, this body will crinkle a little bit, our hair will grow silver. There's a passage of scripture that tells you all that. So you know what? We have got to have that right relationship. We cannot look on the outside. Remember when Jesus sent Samuel into the house of Jesse. Samuel went in and he looked at this one with the bills, proper build. I'm sure he looked at the muscles and he looked at the six pack and he looked at the most handsome. And each time he found one, God said, no, not that one, not that one. To be chosen by God is an honor this morning. I want to tell you to be chosen by God is an honor this morning. And when Samuel went through and he got to the last one that was in the house, God said, no, not that one. He said, almost like, Father, I've tried all. And, and, and none of, he said, no, there has to be another. And he inquired and there was another in the field. There was another one, a little rutty one called David in the field. And that was the one. That was the one. And God wasn't looking at the outside. If God was looking at the outside, he wouldn't have chosen David. I'm sure being in the field, he would have smelled like a sheep. He probably started to look like one. He would have been tired. He would have been sweaty. He would have been smelling like the sheep. Many of us would know how that smelled from many years of dealing with animals. And I'm sure. But God wanted David. He had a special plan and a purpose for David. And this morning I say to you, God has a special plan and a purpose for you. God directed Ruth to the man of God. And Boaz was not just a man of wealth. He was not just a man that had fields. But despite, I saw it as a man of wealth in my young days and with limited knowledge and not understanding what God's words was saying, I too said many times, I'm waiting for my Boaz. Do we understand what is Boaz? Who is Boaz this morning? Do we understand? Boaz was a king's man. He was a man of God. And as Boaz saw this woman in a distance, he didn't just leave it there. He inquired of his servant, who is she? Where has she come from? He inquired this morning, young men and young women, people of God, I ask you to inquire. Inquire this morning. Even when people will come before your path, even when they will come into your space, even when they will try to befriend you, even when they will come into your work environment, wherever they may come, even in the house of God, inquire of God. Find out who he is. Find out who she is. Inquire. He inquired from the servant. And he didn't only inquire from the servant but when he found out she was the daughter-in-law of Naomi he went to Naomi he went right to the source he said Naomi who is she and he inquired and he learned that she was the daughter-in-law because Naomi's son had died and he understood how she took care of Naomi. He understood how Naomi chased her away. And she said, no, I'm going with you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people are going to be my people and your God, my God. Are we willing to say this morning, no matter how far I go in this life, Father God, wherever you take me, I will go. Wherever you lead me, I will go. Are we willing to say that this morning? And we see he inquired. And as he inquired, 
required he went back with a better understanding of who she was. He understood that she wasn't just a woman looking for a husband. He understood that she wasn't searching for a man. He understood that she had started to serve the God that Naomi was serving. He understood that she was laboring in the field so she could feed her mother-in-law, so she could take care of herself. He recognized she wasn't selfish. He realized that she was a selfless person. And as a result, and the hand of God was upon her life, and he extended mercy to her. He extended mercy. Father God, extend mercy upon us this morning. He extended. He asked his servant not to chase her away. Do not chase her from this field, but let her glean. Do not send her to a field of another man because she might be ill-treated, but let her stay here in my field. Do not even take all the barley and leave her for the husk and, and the little scraps that remain, but I beg you, leave some for her. When the favor of God is upon your life, the gates of hell cannot prevail against it, and God will leave things in the field for you, brothers and sisters. God will would leave things in the field for you when people feel that you don't deserve it. When people don't feel that it is there for you, God would leave things in the field for you. And God allowed Boaz to leave up barley in the field for Naomi. He didn't only give her, he didn't only bless her with something to feed herself and to take home, but he extend favor to her. He asked his servant to, when y'all come to eat, Give her something to eat. Give her something to drink. Man, when the favor of God is upon your life, he doesn't only offer protection. He offers provision. He offers sacrifices. He offers everything to us as believers. We have just got to understand that we need to have that right relationship with Jesus Christ. When you have that relationship with Jesus Christ, nothing else in this life matters. But everything in this life that is for you will be for you. Because God said, he is for you and he is with you and if God be for you the gates of hell cannot prevail against the children of God and we see as we go down and Boaz extended mercy to her I want to notice there's something significant in this passage that bumps at me and I want to notice that Naomi that Ruth was not just um, a woman of God but she was a woman that took counsel. She took counsel from her elderly mother-in-law. She took counsel. And sometimes we as a people, we are afraid of good counsel. We don't want nobody to tell us anything. When the old sister in the pew wants to say to you, young man, young woman, you need to serve God. Young man, young woman, God has a plan and a purpose for you. Young man, young woman, you need to find Jesus. We think that they're only talking. We think that they, that she old and she forgetful and she ain't no. But I will tell you this morning, she's a wise woman. We need to take godly counsel. For when Ruth was in the field gleaning, and she came home day after day with her barley. She came home day after day with her grain. Her mother-in-law even recognized that she came home with more grain than she should have because she was taking leftovers. But when the hand of God is upon your life, people will realize that you've got more than you deserve. you got more than leftovers. You have a basket full that you can share and you can have more than enough. When God is for you, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the children of God. And as she went home, and Naomi realized that Ruth was working so hard. Oh, when you're working hard for the service of the Lord, somebody will recognize. Somebody will recognize your hard work. And Naomi recognized that Ruth was working hard in the service of the Lord. And Ruth said to her, you know, uh, Naomi said to her, Ruth, you need to find rest. You need to take rest. I need to find you, literally speaking, I need to find you a husband, but you take rest. And as Naomi counseled her, Naomi knew the laws of the land. Naomi knew what it take for a godly man to find a godly wife. And Naomi spoke positive things into the life of Ruth. And she took Ruth aside and she nurtured her as not only a daughter-in-law, but as a daughter. She nurtured her as a woman of God. She said, Naomi, she said, Ruth, you need to take a shower. You need to bathe. I don't believe it is a physical bath this morning. 
I believe it was a bath of preparedness. I believe that God, that Naomi wanted Ruth to be prepared for what God has in store for us. Sometimes we are asking God for things. Sometimes we are telling Father, Father, I want, Father, I want, Father, I want, 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 want. But are we asking God to prepare us for the want? Huh? Are we asking God to prepare us? And Naomi realized that Ruth needed to be prepared. And she said to her, take a bath. Take a bath. And not only take a bath and go on your own strength. But there are so many times we as believers, we want to do everything in our own strength. We want to do what we want, when we want, and how we want. Because it looks pretty on the outside. But I say to you this morning, the grass is greener on the other side because the water bill is higher. This morning, I say to you, the grass is greener on the neighbor's lawn because he has a higher water bill over there. I encourage you this morning, as Ruth took godly counsel from Naomi, take godly counsel. Take godly counsel. I am well in age, and all now I'm still taking godly counsel. Take godly counsel. It will do you well in the end. And as she took the counsel and she got herself clean and she got herself prepared for what God has in store, Naomi also said to her, anoint yourself. Oh, when the anointing of God is upon you, the gates of hell cannot prevail. When I said it again, when the anointing of God is upon you, you will prosper in areas where you yourself don't expect. You yourself didn't anticipate. You yourself never thought that you would end up where you are. When the anointing, when you are anointed and the anointing of God is upon your life, the roof on made sure, Naomi made sure that Ruth was anointed. And as she anointed her, and she said to her, get dressed. Saints of God, I said, we've got to be prepared. You've got to be prepared for what God has to offer. We need to put ourselves in a state of preparedness. Not only in a state where we ask for things constantly, but be prepared to receive. And as Ruth made herself available, she washed herself and she was anointed. And she was encouraged to dress in her finest. And as she went in, one of the other things where we go in, we have got to be quiet. I say we have got to be quiet. And Naomi encouraged Ruth, when you go into the king's man, redeemer, do not go in and keep any noise. Go in and lay quietly at his feet. Lay at his feet. A lot of times we have got to humble ourselves. We have got to get back to the beginning, people of God. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, it says, in the beginning, God. In Genesis chapter 1, it said, in the beginning, God. And in St. John chapter 1, starting from verse 1 to maybe verse 5 or 6, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was light, and the light was the light of man, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. We have got to get back to the beginning, people of God. We have got to get back to our first love, that right relationship with Jesus Christ today. And as she anointed herself and she went in, she did exactly what her mother-in-law said to her. Her mother-in-law said to her, do not make any noise, but you go quietly at his feet and you lay down. You just lay at his feet and be quiet. She didn't only go in and be quiet, but she was prepared. She had a nice aroma. She had not only a nice smell, but she had that anointed. And she went in and she was prepared. And as she lay at his feet, the man of God, the king's moon redeemer, he recognized she was there. And he covered her. He recognized she was there. And he realized that she was just not any woman. She is an extraordinary woman. She didn't come to disturb me. She didn't come in a seductive manner. She didn't come and push herself on me. But she came and she laid peacefully at my feet. And he recognized there were fine qualities in this woman that was gleaning in his field. And when he realized, he gave her certain instructions. Not to let anyone know that she was in his bed and she, that she was at his feet. She must go. And she must continue as nothing had happened. And he will take it from here. And the man of God, the kingsman redeemer, the laws of the land must have been for the first in line in her lineage 
and her husband's family to buy the field that was belonging to her husband and then to take the wife. And Boaz being the man of God that he was, he didn't just say, I'm going to keep her for myself. A lot of times we find a piece of gold and we don't check to see who the rightful owner is. We want to hold it. We want to own it. Finders keepers, that's what we say. But that's not what the word of God say. That's not what the word of God say. And Boaz didn't just say, I'm going to keep her for myself because she came in my bed and she lied at my feet and she's cleaning in my field. He could have been selfish, but he wasn't a selfish man. He followed protocol. He followed the principles of the land. He followed the laws of the land. He followed the principles of God. And he went to the next in line. And he didn't only go alone, but he took the elders with him. He took the elders with him and he said to them, Oh, the sons of Naomi, Alimelech, and those have this land for sale. And you are the next in line to purchase this land. Are you willing to buy the land? And he said, yes. How many of us this morning are willing to buy land, but we are not willing to take what comes with the land? How many of us are willing to buy property and take up positions and are not willing to go with what goes with the territory? But this morning, that man said, when Boaz said to him, not only the property are you buying, but here it is, you'll get a chance because his wife, his widow is available and she goes with the property. You will have to marry the widow. He didn't say you would have to take the widow unless she be your girlfriend. He didn't say you have to take the widow unless she be your, your fiancé. He said you'll have to take the widow and allow her to be your wife. He said wife. And as he said that to the man, he said, oh no, I'm not willing to take the widow. So you are the next in line. You take the property. And when he said that, I'm sure Boaz would have been excited. I am sure he would have been excited because he knew the quality of what he was getting. This morning when we have got that right relationship with Jesus Christ, we will understand the quality of what we're getting. We mustn't look on the outside because this would fade. This will fade. It will wrinkle. Our teeth will go. Our eyesight will fade. Our hearing will go. Our white hair will come. And when that is all said and done, if it is only the outside appearance, then we will walk away because there's nothing left. But if we look deep within the heart this morning, deep within the heart, just as God instructed Samuel, I have, you have to look at the heart of David and understand who is next in line to be that king that I desire. This morning I say to you, let us be in that right relationship with God. Let us be in right standing with God. When you are in right standing with God, everything in your life will line up. Young man, young woman, young boy, young girl, even all the folks, I say to you this morning, when you are in that right relationship with God, everything in your life will line up. People will look at you and they will marvel. They cannot understand how you would have gotten to where you are. They will not understand of how you have risen so. They will not understand how you would have grown to such a level of maturity. They will not understand, but you know, and I know, that it is God. It is not your own strength you are moving in. It's not your own strength. It is not, we are incapable of doing anything, but it is through the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. It is through God and God alone that we move and we have our beings. It is through him alone. And then as Boaz realized that the man wasn't going to take roof, he said, you all heard what he said. And the custom of the land was when I've given something over to you, I need to give you the sandals to go with it. And he was given the sandals to go with it. This is a sign of my seal word. The sign of my word this morning that I have given you permission to purchase that land. I have given you permission to marry the widow of Elimelech. I have given you permission. You can take her. And Boaz found himself a woman of God. And Ruth found herself a woman, a man of God. This morning I say to you, if God is God, let him control your life. Let God be first and foremost in your life. The scriptures has encouraged us not to be unequally yoked. 
It says that in God's word, do not be unequally yoked this morning. This word is not only for you, but it is for me. This morning, this word is for all of us. Let us not be unequally yoked. Don't matter what comes your way in this life. Don't matter the circumstances of this life. Don't matter how things may appear. Even right now with all the COVID situations and the lockdown, and there are only a handful of us in the house of God, let us be mindful that God is here. And if God is in the midst, it doesn't matter. Because he said in his word, where the twos and threes are gathered in my name, I am in the midst. And this morning we know that God is here. God is with us. Even you streaming online at home, you may be in your living room and figure, well, I'm all alone. Or you may be in your kitchen or wherever you are listening to this broadcast this morning. Remember that you are never alone because God has promised in his word never to leave nor to forsake, but to be with us until the end. This morning, I encourage you to be like Ruth. I encourage you not to just go after the physical things, not to just look for a Boaz because he has fields, not to look for a Boaz. I myself looked at that when I had no knowledge of God's word, when I didn't have the full understanding of God's word. We looked to the physical. I looked and I said many a times, I can't wait for my Boaz. And I asked God many times since then to forgive me, Father, for I didn't know any better. This morning I say there's more to Boaz than the field. There's more to any man or woman than the outward appearance. You've got to ask God to help you. You've got to inquire. You've got to know more about the personality of the individual. You've got to know the lifestyle of the individual. You've got to ask God to show you. You've got to ask God for that spirit of discernment. You've got to ask God for that spirit of revelation to be able to reveal to you the true person that is before you. You've got to ask God because it is only God that can direct us accordingly. We need to ask God every moment of every day in every aspect of his life. Oftentimes when people will come before me, I'll say, Father, who is she? Father God, who is he? What do they want? What are their purpose? What are their plans? Why would you allow them to come before me? Because I believe and I know that what God don't allow you this hinder. And even if the enemy sends somebody before you and God allow it, and God don't allow it, he will hinder it. And when they come before us, we need to ask God, who is he? Who is she? What are their purpose? What are their plans, Lord God? What lesson is there in this for me? What do you want me to teach them? What are you sending them to teach me, God? Show me the positive side of this friendship. Show me the positive side of this relationship. Father God, show me who he is this morning. Father God, show me who she is this morning. And I know, without a shadow of a doubt, if we continue to seek God and to have that right relationship with God, not playing games, not playing games. We can't walk God on a Sunday, not on a Monday. This word, see this word? This word is a lifestyle. We've got to live it. Joseph Nye said, we've got to live your religion every day. On a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you've got to live your religion every day. This morning, I encourage you as I wrap up to live your religion every day. If God be God, serve him. If God be God this morning, I ask you to serve him. This morning, I ask you to seek God. Seek him like you have never seek him before. There are so many areas of our lives and so much turmoil. There are so many disappointments. There are so many things that are coming before us, even as children of God. This is not a perfect walk. This is not a perfect life. Constantly, we are faced with trials and tribulation. But remember, Job, he too had trials and tribulation. He too had trials and tribulation. Many things came against Job. And God had allowed the enemy to test Job. The word says that he allowed the enemy to test Job. He said, the only thing I'm not going to allow you to do is to touch his life. But Job was a man of integrity. Are you a man of integrity this morning? Are you a woman of integrity that will say, regardless of what comes my way, God, I will serve you. I will serve you because you love me. You have given life to me, God. I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me. Heartaches and broken pieces, ruined lives are why you died on Calvary. Because your touch, God, 
is what I long for this morning. I pray that this word would have ministered to some man, some woman, some boy or some girl. I pray this morning as I reach my hand up, that you will reach your hand up and you would ask God to be the center full of your life. You would ask God to direct your path in every area of your life because he is the all-sufficient one. He is a God that will never leave nor forsake you. Your mother will leave. Your father will leave maybe because of death. But God will never leave you. I encourage you this morning to have that right relationship with God. Be a part of what God has in store for you this morning. I pray that the, God's word was a blessing to the souls of his people. Even now, as I turn back over to the worship leader, in Jesus' name, amen. to worship God. Let's go forward for God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put on your armor this morning, church. Hallelujah. Take up your sword and let's go in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
you put your armor on, if you take up your sword and keep going forward, you will experience the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we close off this afternoon's service, we're going to ask our sister Waith to come forward and do this for us. Hallelujah. 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 We have come into the presence of the Lord today and truly our souls are blessed and encouraged. Father, just want to thank you. Just want to praise you, Lord. Just want to honor you, dear Heavenly Father, for all that you have done for us today, dear God. Father, from the songs of the sanctuary, we thank you, dear God, for the worship team. We thank you, Lord, for the songs, Lord, which encourage us this morning. Father, we pray you remember the musicians another time, continue to touch them, even the technical team. We thank you for them also. Everything that has been said and done here today, we just want to give you all the glory. We just want to give you all the praise because we know that you are worthy, dear Heavenly Father, from the rising of the sun even to the going down there often. Best of all, we thank you for your word. Father, help us, Lord, to choose the right relationship. I'm sure each and every one of us that are in your sanctuary today has chosen you, dear God, to be our, we have that relationship with you today, and we are so very thankful. Even remember our sister, the Lord, continue, Lord, to stand by her, continue to touch her, Lord, that even as she bring more messages like these, Lord, that our souls will be blessed and encouraged to go every step of the way. And we know it was the beginning and now it's an ending there, Heavenly Father. We just want to honor you, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord. We thank you for this beautiful day, dear God. Father, continue to strengthen us, continue to protect us. Lord, we pray that as we come, Lord, to the end, that you will take us home in peace and safety. Father, and if it's thy will to bring us back into your sanctuary, we pray that you will bring us filled with the Spirit. This mercy I ask in Jesus' name, and may the grace of our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.